Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Inventor 2021, What's New? Uh, my name is Carlton Royan. I'm an application engineer of Worth Micrographics. And uh, I'll be stepping us through what Autodesk has uh, done with Inventor for 2021, what the new features are. I will be talking through it as well as showing some demonstrations on those features. So our, uh, let's just get this. Okay, so as with every year, Autodesk break up their improvements into various areas. Um, so this year they've categorized the improvements as professional grade improvements. And these improvements are looking at essentially um, performance increases, automation, allowing you to work with bigger, larger, more complex assemblies, but also work with them quicker. Then they've got their connected improvements, basically looking at improving on import and export through AnyCAD. Uh, this year we've seen a nice improvement with Revit and how Inventor can connect with Revit uh, documents and um, a bit of automation there. And then also the third area in which the improvements are is uh, from the Inventor Ideas. And the Inventor Ideas is a forum where users can go and post up their ideas on how to improve the software. So a lot of these, essentially these Inventor experience uh, changes are driven by the customers who use the software saying, hey, listen, I think X, Y, and Z would improve usability a lot. And Autodesk look at that and they see what the feasibility of that improvement is. So uh, they then include what they can as far as uh, the inventor ideas go. So those are the three main areas that Autodesk um, kind of categorize the changes in. And we'll go through these, through each of these areas, and we will um, be breaking down what they've done um, in those areas. So moving along uh, to the what's new, uh, we can break down those three areas a little bit more. Uh, into the inventor experience. So that is, how do you actually you know, interact with inventor? How they change the user interface, um, making it easier for you to work. And the biggest change that they have done here um, for 2021, we'll see, um, you can see there the interface in that image top left-hand corner is a introduction of a pre-release for the dark theme. Uh, then we're also going to have a look at AnyCAD for Revit, how we can bring in uh, Revit files and have a live connection to the Revit file and how that can update inside of Inventor. Uh, there are performance increases. Unfortunately, performance is not something that is well demonstrated over a webinar, but we can at least have a, a talk about what performance increases they have. Uh, then we look at part modeling, specifics around part modeling and what they've done to um, you know, improve or add on to the part modeling features, uh, some assembly modeling functionality and changes, uh, drawing creation, there's some uh, small changes in drawing creation, frame generator, this is probably about the biggest change for 2021, is uh, in frame generator, they've made a lot of improvements within that environment um, in the workflow, modernizing the workflow for frame generator. And then there is some drawing automation. We'll touch on this a little bit as well. Uh, drawing automation using iLogic. So for the inventor experience, uh, what they're basically looking at here is decluttering your workspace with the new options and property panel. Um, and there's also the introduction of dark theme. Um, now, in the last couple of releases, they've been rolling out what they call uh, the property panels, and you would have seen this uh, probably mostly in the whole command and the extrude command in 2020 and um, 2019. 
and they're rolling out more and more of these property panels uh, or property panels to more and more commands. And so your experience stays constant from command to command. We can have a look here at what the dark theme looks like. So if I can just uh, alternate between those two slides, we have the light theme and then a preview of the dark theme environment. Uh, so you can enable this in application options. Uh, it is a preview. There are some windows. I know, for instance, our logic is still white, um, but you can at least experience that preview of that dark theme and give feedback on the Inventor Communities forums as well. So that is uh, introduction to that Inventor experience of what they are looking at doing there. And we'll move on to the AnyCAD for Revit. And essentially what this allows you to do, that AnyCAD for Revit, is it allows you to link in a Revit file into your Inventor design. The specific example we see here is a circular glass building. So it has the steel framework clad in glass. And on the outside of the, the building, uh, the mechanical engineer needs to build the awning on the side of the building. So you would get the Revit model from you would get the Revit model from the architect, bring that into your inventor design, and that then enables you to design off of that existing inventor model. And what this does is it allows to maintain associativity with uh, that Revit model. If it is a large Revit model, it also allows you to select a custom view that was created in that model. And this will then isolate the area of concern. And we'll see this in the demo. It's a rather large Revit data set, but we're able to choose a 3D view that isolates just a portion of the model that the mechanical engineer or the, the structural engineer needs to work with. And uh, over and above that, it also allows you access to individual features within the Revit model. We can see on the right-hand side, there's a browser with the Revit model listed, the ASAK um, part there, that you can expand that out and have a look at the individual features within that Revit model. So we can see there, They've expanded out curtain walling. Uh, there's a curtain wall. The individual solid files from that curtain wall are visible in the browser. So time for a short little demo here. What I'll do is go into my Inventor 2021. And I have already set the option here to open up the import. And uh, that basically is just using the place imported CAD file and selecting the Revit file. Uh, it will then take a few minutes to load the import, uh, depending on the size of the model. So we can see here that uh, the model that I have is basically a city block with a whole bunch of buildings. And importing or bring that window up could take a few minutes. Uh, so I just opted to skip that step um, for the sake of the demo. Uh, but what we can do here on the left hand side for the 3D view is you're able to select a 3D view and it will generate the preview on the right hand side so that you can uh, see what you're importing. At the top, it also tells you the number of elements that will be imported. So here we've got 16,000, almost 17,000 elements. Uh, that won't be a great idea to import that. So we'll go down to Owl's Nest. That generates the preview of just the Owl's Nest. 297 elements, that's a lot more acceptable, and it's the building that needs the awning designed on it. Uh, when you hit OK, it does give you a warning that it contains 297 elements. For best performance, choose something with fewer than 250 elements. But in this case, we're not too far over that. We can hit OK, and it will then import and run that translation. We now see that uh, that wasn't too long to bring those in. So now I have the Revit building attached to my cursor. I can do a right click, place ground of that origin, and place that model into my assembly. 
Uh, and this is done in an assembly file. So you can now go ahead and use options such as um, add part or add assembly to now add components in here and design those components with reference to that imported Revit assembly. And here we can see that I can go in and export C or open up ceilings and go and view the ceiling portions. You can right click and set visibility on and off for these uh, for these bodies as well. So if I want to switch that roof off and the ceiling, I can expand everything out, select those and switch the visibility off. I may ask you to modify your design view representations. I'm going to click OK there and there it's removed the ceiling off of that building. So it allows you to work and hide things that you don't need as well on that model. And if the Revit file changes, the Revit designer updates that model, then Inventor will go back here. The Inventor lightning bolt will show and the file will show as out of date and you can click the update icon and have that Revit document, um, that Revit imported file update accordingly. Yeah, so that is the AnyCAD for Revit. Then moving on to performance improvements. So with performance improvements, they have made uh, large, or they've made improvements with large assemblies and complex assemblies. And the idea here is to spend more time designing rather than waiting for your computer to respond to a uh, a command. And there's been improvements with inside parts and assemblies as well as uh, frame design as well as human pipe environments. Um, so they've improved, made improvements across the board. And a big area with the big areas where they have improved performance is with your um, opening files and updating files. So if uh, assemblies have been updated by someone else, and you then need to do a local or global update, that performance has been improved. Assembly workflow performances have also been improved. Uh, things like constraining, placing, um, selecting geometry. If, you had, if you've ever selected a large amount of sub-assemblies within a main GA, um, you may have noticed there's a bit of a lag time before everything is selected and you can, let's say, right click and change options. That has been improved, that waiting time, once you've selected a large amount of items, has been um, improved. Um, they've also improved graphical navigation so that when you rotate models around, the frame rate stays up and you are not uh, losing as much frame rate. Then part of that performance and modeling time is uh, customer driven. Um, so with part modeling to save you time when you are part modeling, um, they've improved some, or they've brought in some improvements to reduce the amount of uh, mouse clicks. In this case, with a multi body part, you can now drag a window and select multiple bodies using a window. In the past, you had to hold control and select multiple um, or click multiple times to select each body. Um, so there have been improvements, customer driven improvements in sheet metal, multi body, and also with 3D annotations. So we'll see here in this image, uh, we've got some 3D annotations, uh, basically your dimensions and notes and leaders, but within the 3D model, they can now. Or they can now reference to custom our property data as well. Um, so if we have a look at the next screen here, uh, the window select for bodies and faces, uh, top right hand image there. I'll actually do a demo on this where you can use a box now to drag and highlight multiple bodies. And um, there are also some unwrap enhancements. Um, I won't be covering those in a demo. 
but there's some enhancements with how the unwrapped surface of that complex pressed sheet metal part um, is aligned with that sheet metal as well as which edges are held true and essentially when you unwrap those holes stay circular on the unwrapped face. Um, this little window, the next window here is showing um, the display of uh, the main format tech dialog box here is showing the display of um, our properties with custom our properties within a 3D annotation. Uh, you can do that via the standard text dialog box. And then on the top right hand side, uh, option for showing extended names. Um, I don't think many people know about this one, but you can have an option that in your browser, your extrude tells you the type of extrude, um, let's say it's a join and the depth of the extrude, you can turn that information on. Uh, essentially, this has been expanded so that your mirror and all work features also show extended names. In the past, they wouldn't show that extended information. And I'll show what this looks like in the di in our demo. Uh, another nice customer-driven improvement is in sheet metal. Um, you can now bend a flange according to a reference face. Uh, in the past, you would have had to have set a specific angle, and if you didn't know that angle, you'd maybe have to go measure it first. Uh, now, with this, you're able to select an existing work feature or face, and then have that flange bend according to that selected angle. So we'll see this in a demo. We'll go back to Inventor. The first thing here to demo is the uh, selection of multiple bodies. So I'll go up here to the selection filter and pick select bodies. And in the past, to select different bodies, you'd have to click and then hold control and click on the next body. But what we can do now is you're able to use a box and drag a box over the bodies and select. So here we see we've selected the face or oh, the, the cap of that um, that gauge and then the needle on the gauge itself. So this works both for your left to right box that you drag, anything within that gets selected, or if you go from your right to left, anything that that box touches will select. So you can see in this case it will select all the bodies as I drag that box to contact each body. Time saver here with multi bodies, not having to hold control and click on multiple items. The annotation, uh, the 3D annotation, uh, you can go to annotate tab in a 3D model and you can add in your annotation. I'm going to use a leader text here, select the face of the of the component to add the leader text to that. And what I'm going to do here is just align the uh, select a different plane, just put that annotation on. Right, let me start that again. I'll select to place down that annotation, and in the dialog box here. I'm able to choose from the model itself a uh, sorry from the model itself and go to custom properties and there's a list of custom R properties one of them being the face color add that in and when hitting OK that face color is pulled through onto that annotation changing the R property. I go to custom art properties. Here's my list of custom art properties. Going to that and changing the art property or that custom property to green and hitting OK will update the annotation within the model. Then the next one that we looked at was that sheet metal. Um, so that improvement with bending a flange to an existing work plane. So what I have here is I have a 
L-shaped section that's bent up. And what I wish to do is extend this horizontal face on the right hand side so that it extends to the left to close the opening, but it also needs a flange that will then fold up and overlap with the existing flange on the left hand side. And so using the flange option, I'm able to select the edge that I want to add the flange to. And you'll see here, it will immediately start to bend it up. And if I don't know the angle, I can't specify it here by the value. Uh, now the improvement is that we can change this to by reference and then select that existing work plane. And you'll note that this is going to extend the existing flange to close the gap and then bend the new flange up by the specified amount. So if I say, let's bend that flange up by 60, I get that flange bent up by 60 using that existing face as a reference. I'll hit OK there, and it then closes off that box quite quickly and easily, just reducing the amount of modeling required um, for such an operation. Okay, so that is your uh, select bodies, 3D annotation, and sheet metal improvements. And we'll then move on and look at some customer driven improvements within the assembly modeling environment. Okay, so within the assembly within the assembly environment, there have been various changes and some of them have been aimed at um, saving files. Um, we can see that there has been a save enhancement to files, and they call it a save enhancement. Uh, basically, when you save your assembly, you get a list of files that have been changed. And what they're allowing you to now do in the top right hand side, you'll see in the application options under the save tab, they're allowing you to now choose what that default prompt and action would be. Um, so in the past, you'd get a long list of items and it would ask you whether or not you want to save each of those items. Um, you can now pre-configure how those um, prompts will be shown. And you can also even check on or off whether or not saved or library files should be saved. My opinion, that should probably be off. Uh, library files should be read only anyway and not saved. Um, within the Within the design accelerator environment, there have been some enhancements there as well. Um, in the bolted connection um, dialog box or design accelerator, there is now an option to enable or disable the bolted connection sub assembly. Uh, so when you create a bolted connection, by default, it will create a sub assembly with all your nuts and bolts within that sub assembly. Uh, some designers don't like to have that sub-assembly of nuts and bolts, so you can turn the option off and have those nuts and bolts shown at assembly level rather than in a sub-assembly. Now moving on from that, tube and pipe. Uh, there has been some file naming improvements in tube and pipe. Um, as well as the move to the property panel for tube and pipe. Um, so we can actually see here on the right hand side of the property panels at the top when creating a route in Inventor's tube and pipe environment, uh, that route is uh, that route dialog box has been updated to the new properties panel. Uh, on the bottom right hand side here, it's uh, it's actually showing the file naming default for mirror and copy, but I'll show you in Inventor. Um, there are tube and pipe options as well for setting up predefined file naming uh, within assemblies. Then uh, looking at some customer driven improvements in the drawing creation environment. Um, this allows us to now streamline workflows within environments as far as displaying of um, reference data 
as well as a couple of improvements with dimensioning. Uh, so if we look here, the diameter dimension um, now displays when you select two parallel lines that are essentially your um, edges of your circle, you'll see that it, it, it automatically includes the diameter value rather than you having to go and insert that diameter symbol. Uh, so that is now an automated process of getting that diameter for parallel lines. Uh, it, dimensions can now also be aligned to a specific edge. So on the right hand side here, there's two holes that if you measure the distance between the holes along a specific edge, you can now align to that edge. Um, and a funny one here, measure command. The measure command is now available in your drawing environment. Um, it's now included so that you can measure distances on your drawing rather than having to put down a dimension uh, to see what the distance is. And that's more for a information sake um, while you are busy modeling. And the last one, the last point here is reference parts. If you're designing a checking fixture for an exhaust, that exhaust would be the reference part. You can now have, or you now have options to show that reference part um, as shaded, uh, with the edges shaded, or sorry, with the part shaded, but the edges set differently. So there are more display styles available for those reference components. Uh, moving on to frame generator, there are uh, been massive improvements in frame generator, and uh, the in, essentially the entire uh, frame generator environment has moved over to these property panels. As you can see on the right hand side, um, when placing down a frame member or changing a frame member, the property panel on the right hand side shows um, your various tools for being able to place that down. Uh, within the graphics window, you also have the option there now of being able to position and uh, move your frame member with reference to the skeleton that is being placed on. So just having a further look into frame generator, there have been uh, several commands that have moved over to that property panel. Uh, we can see them on the right hand side, what those commands look like within the property panel and uh, these commands include insert frame, change frame, reuse, trim extend, change reuse, corner joint and frame member info. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, so we've got those dialog boxes and you'll notice at the top of most of those properties dialog boxes you have the option to save a preset. Uh, so you can actually predefine the setup of the dialog box so that it makes it easier to quickly reuse and modify um, frame members according to the active um, command. Just looking a little further into frame generator, there have been improvements in the file naming as well. Uh, so we can see here on the top right hand side, file naming defaults, you're able to um, assign the display name that's shown in Inventor's browser to be the same as the file name, or the file name should be the same as the display name, or within Inventor, the display name could show certain information, but your file name can show uh, or can be saved as a different name. I'll show that within Inventor, it'll make a little bit more sense there. Um, appearance settings have also been improved, and there are some. Uh, zoom and view controls included in the frame generator, which allow you to quite easily align your view with the inserted frame. <coughs> um, also with the trim extend, uh, when you are trimming frame members down to length, you are now able to trim frame members to a curve in. Uh, in the past, we weren't able to do this. Uh, now, when that frame member is trimmed, we can see in the top right hand corner there, it is trimmed to match the internal radius or external radius 
of the selected uh, beam. And the notch command now has expanded notch templates. Uh, so on the bottom right hand side here, those notch templates include uh, channels, T's and R beams. And these templates are um, predefinable so that you can set the clearances shown uh, within each of those images. Okay, so I'm going to go back into Inventor and just show a couple of these demo points. Uh, so I've got a sheet metal assembly here. I'm going to add in, uh, well, let's first look at the, the save options. Uh, so under Tools, Application Options, we'll have a look at the Save dialog box. And we have options here that allow us to set whether or not files should be prompted to save. Uh, so if you've opened a file that was, let's say, from 2019 or 2020, and it needs to migrate to 2021, you've got the option here to say, well, should it prompt for you to save that file to migrate it? And what is the default condition? So if you want all your files migrated by default, you can say, you know what, don't prompt me, but yes, if I've opened that file, I close it, I save that file into the latest version. And so you've got various options to adjust there. And here's the option for save files in library folders as well. Uh, then if we go into this, uh, if we go into what's it now? So on the file tab, we go into the file tab. Uh, right at the bottom of the file tab is the option to open up the file naming defaults settings. And within the file naming default setting, you are able to set a frame generator file naming. Uh, so we can see here on the right hand side the file name for the actual. Um, assembly frame or the frame sub-assembly can be built up using existing um, parameters or variables, should I say. So yeah, we've got assembly name, so that will take the name of the current assembly. It'll add the text frame and it will add a unique number. If you want to add anything else to that, you can then use the plus option on the right hand side and you can actually add in uh, let's say an index number or even a date and a day. So you can select one of those variables and it will then place it into that dialog box. And on the left hand side, use frame name as display name or file name as display name. Uh, essentially, that would uh, alleviate the need to set up any of the um, display names. However, if you do want to show your display name differently to your file name, you can then go and build up your own display names as required. So I could just call this, let's say, according to the assembly name, rather than the assembly name and the unique number. It'll just shorten how it's displayed in the browser. Uh, then for Tube and Park, we have a similar setup, file name and display name for all the various Tube and Park components. Uh, your tube and pipe sub-assemblies, the location of where that tube and pipe sub-assembly would be saved with reference to your assembly part. And you know, I could go down the list. There's your, your runs, the location of the runs, the assembly routes, where would that route be saved, and the actual pipes themselves, where would the pipes be saved. So we've got all those save options in there as well. And the last one here is for mirror and copy. So you can set up a default file naming for when you create a copy or when you create a mirror. And we'll see here there's the underscore mirror option, which uh, was the default in the mirror command when using it. And you can now change that according to these settings. So there's the sort of the file naming options. 
uh, if we go into bolted connection, go here, design, bolted connection. I'll do a very quick bolted connection here on this frame. Let's go the termination frame back. On the top right hand side here, there is the option to enable or disable the subassembly structure. So at the moment here, I've got a setup with a couple of bolts just in a threaded hole. And at the moment, the subassembly structure is disabled. So I'll hit OK. And each of those nuts and bolts are inserted and placed directly inside of the assembly without a bolted connection subassembly. However, if you do need to edit that bolted connection, there is a bolted connection um, entity here, which you can right click and then use the edit using design accelerator to modify your bolted connection as required. Alternatively, switching that option back on will give you the default uh, would give you the default behavior so if i switch that on there and i set my bolted connection and hit ok it then creates that sub assembly and in the browser on the left hand side you get just that sub assembly um, entry or that node with all of the hardware stored underneath it. So allowing a little bit of flexibility or extra flexibility in bolted connection. Okay, and moving on to the customer related improvements, uh, just for the drawings uh, that we had a look at. We've got some options here we'll look at in this example. Um, the annotate dimension and I can dimension between these two existing holes and if we have a look at the the aligned dimension between the two it's not parallel with the side of the pot so to align that parallel with the side of the pot you right click go to dimension type and then choose the aligned option that then allows you to select your reference and align according to that reference. So pick those two again, dimension type aligned, and I'll align it to that reference. There uh, we're going here now. Sorry, rotated, picking the wrong one. Got rotated and then rotated according to the selected reference. So that rotated option there is the new option. We'll rotate it according to a selected edge. So I could pick this corner on the top right hand side here and get a dimension offset according to that corner or according to the edge. Uh, if we go on to the next uh, just want to quickly get uh, have a look at some more of the uh, drawing automation here. Um, one thing that has been improved as well is the creation of drawings. So if I create a new drawing, uh, on the right hand side, you'll see that that dialog box there is is different. Um, it now shows you the default template at the top. And then it also shows what are your sheet, um, your default sheet styles. Let me skip the right name here quickly. Uh, your sheet formats. So it shows your default sheet formats within a drawing. Uh, so sheet formats is something that has always existed, uh, but what Autodesk have now done is they have allowed you to access those sheet formats directly from the create new file dialog box. So we can 
select the standard IDW and then pick a relative sheet format. Uh, so if I pick this sheet format here with the uh, five views and hit create, I would need to choose my document, uh, which in this case is this component. So 9ER OC891, 9ER OC891. Open up that document and it automatically places down those views according to the selected, um, the selected sheet format. You'll see that there's already notes on the drawing, so notes are supported. Uh, one of the previous sheet formats there also has a parts list as well as flat patterns. Those are all supported in your sheet, um, in your sheet formats. Um, that flat pattern, if I actually just go to this component here, and I decide now to create a new drawing view from that using the flat pattern sheet format, that will then place it onto that sheet. You may just need to set the scale. And in this case, that component doesn't have the flat pattern created yet. So just create the flat pattern there. And do that again. Okay, drawing view sheet metal. Okay, there it is. There, we just need to change the scale of the part to match as well as the flat pattern. So it brings that information in and places it down on the drawing. You don't need to go in and then find the flat pattern and place the flat pattern down. It'll create that according to the existing sheet format. Okay, then I spoke about reference geometry. Uh, in the case of this drawing here, we've got a assembly where the guard between the two posts is a reference piece of geometry. So if I double click on this and go to display options, uh, sorry, model state, you can change that reference to show as shaded. And if I change through those options, you'll see how the behavior of that reference part in the center there changes. I can go edges as reference, which is one of the existing settings. Uh, basically in 2021, if your main style is shaded, you will now have the shaded options for your reference geometry. Okay, just keeping an eye on time here, running a little over. Um, last one I'm going to do here from a demo perspective is frame generator. Uh, we had a look at a couple of improvements with frame generator, and I had said that the environment has changed quite a bit. We'll see here for inserting a frame, uh, we now have this properties panel where you can now choose your component or your reference to insert that frame member and you can then choose the frame member using the options in each of these drop downs uh, so you can choose which category of frame type you can choose the standard that you want to choose from your family square tube rectangular tube the size and so on you go down the list now, some improvements here is they've got zoom options, which allows you to actually zoom and view the end of the profile you're inserting so that you can then use the arrows in the window and the radio controls to then set the position of that um, piece that you're putting in. And once you adjust that, you can also see in the orientation portion of the dialog box 
those values adjust there as well. So you can change orientation in the properties panel. At your position, you will change in the graphics window. Uh, there are other zoom options up here as well. So you can zoom to zoom to the frame manipulator where you're seeing it in the ISO view, or you can zoom to view it in a end view. And you can then also return back to the initial view where you started. So you can then place down other frame members. Insert those frame members. And from there, you'd be able to use uh, your standard frame commands. Uh, so let's have a look at, uh, let's say, the MITRE command. The MITRE command is in that new properties panel. You're able to select, and the nice thing with the new MITRE command is you're able to select multiple members, and it will MITRE all the selected members according to your properties. Yeah, so. Uh, reuse member dialog box as well within the new presets. So various updates there within the uh, within the frame generator environment. And if we jump back to the presentation, uh, there has been some drawing automation. I okay, got sheet formats. That's what I actually just uh, demoed now. And the sheet formats. Uh, they support parts lists, uh, creating the view from the model, flat pattern views, uh, any view settings, so uh, depending whether a view is shaded or shown as um, with hidden edges. Um, you can also have an option to fit views to the sheet when you create your sheet formats. And there is also um, vast improvements with drawing automation. Uh, as far as creating drawings and using our logic to uh, dimension the drawings, th this does create um, an opportunity to automate, uh, let's say, standard components a lot easier, uh, but it does rely on having um, faces within the components named to be able to add these in. Uh, but they've improved our logic drawing creation as well. So, to summarize and allow some time for Q&A, um, we're going back to you know, professional grade improvements with performance and allowing you to work with larger, more complex assemblies um, at an increased speed, um, allowing you to create, um, you know, create geometry quicker with less clicks. Um, on the right hand side there, that connected design, allowing you to connect and automate certain processes and then improving on inventor based on ideas provided by the customer, by the people who actually use the software. And uh, I'll open up for any Q&A. And so um, you're free to I'll just have a look how many people we have on the call. And then we may be able to open up microphones. If you don't have a microphone, you can chat in the chat box. Uh, I'm just trying to get where's the participants open and allow participants to chat. And I seem to have lost that participants dialog box here. If you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat dialog box while I see if I can switch on audio for those of you that can chat. Let's give you a few minutes to think about questions and put them in the chat.
Thanks, Jason. Pleasure. Uh, pleasure, Neil. That's a pleasure, Ger. Uh, hope you guys learned something new today, get you excited for uh, 2021. Um, feel free to contact us if you do need any assistance with upgrading. Um, we'll actually switch over to our contact page. There's my email on the bottom left-hand side of the contacts page um, and our office information on the top right hand side there as well. So if you want, you can take a screenshot of that. Um, I think our marketing is also going to make these available. Um, let me just see, I think. Will they be downloaded to the recording? I think our marketing will be making it available. Um, Vincent, if you just want to uh, let us know, I've unmuted you. As far as I know, I think these will these will be available. Ah, there we go. Videos will go onto YouTube. Thanks, Vincent. Okay, I'm just going to leave that uh, contact up there for a little bit longer, and uh, see a couple of guys are still hanging on on the call. Um, you have any questions? Okay, great. Have a good day too. Um, I'll hold on for a few more minutes. If anyone has a question, they hit them, and then uh, if not, we'll uh, end the recording. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I see most of the people have dropped out, um, unless somebody's typing a really long question. Give it another minute and then we will call it to an end. Okay, I think that's going to conclude the webinar today. Thank you for attending. Thank you for sticking right to the end. And we'll see you in the next webinar. Cheers.